So welcome back folks. Here we are at one of our final stages on preparing this chest armor for our Mandalorian Mercs costume. Uh, this is a piece that I've finished. I might do one more pass of weathering. Uh, for those of you that have been paying attention or subscribing to my previous videos, uh, you will have noticed uh, this is the same piece that I'd chipped by doing the layers, the multiple layers of painting. Uh, but right here, I went back and added some black and brown oil paint. Uh, there are lots of folks out there that are weathering uh, armor, and uh, they're using either oil paints or acrylics. I've done both. Uh, I think you can get a really good result from either one. It just happens to, uh, that this particular video, we're going to use the oil paints. Uh, Punish Props does a really good tutorial on weathering. Uh, the most recent uh, video that I watched that I'll be using some of his techniques was a uh, YouTuber called Off Earth. I think he did a really good job of mixing the oil paint and the naphtha. Um, I've used paint thinner before, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use the naphtha on this particular uh, piece. And you'll see, again, lots of weathering some chip paint, but also some black, some browns, and even some spotting. Uh, so we're gonna try to replicate that here uh, on our left side chest piece that I'd mentioned last week uh, in my 200 subscriber video. Uh, so again, thanks for those of you that have subscribed. If you'd like to see me continue uh, moving forward in this build and uh, watch me add soft parts as well as building armor, uh, and blasters and leather work, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Um, also, you might notice, folks, that I have a little bit better audio. Um, here recently, I picked up a lavalier mic. Uh, looks like this one here. It's uh, relatively cheap online, and uh, I think it has a much better sound quality than the Rode shotgun mic that I was using on top of my camera. Uh, before you start weathering though, folks, let's get back to this painting. Uh, you might want to use some rub and buff on the edges, especially if you've done multiple layers and maybe dulled out that silver finish that's on the bottom. I went ahead and did some of the edges just to bring back some of the shine. And then we're going to go ahead and cover this with our uh, oil paint and naphtha. Uh, all you'll need are some chip brushes. I also have some small plastic cups. Um, recently, I've also started using these throwaway to-go containers. These are the lids. Uh, so if you go to eat at a restaurant and they give you a to-go container, you can always wash that. And I save these just so I can have something to mix paints or any types of adhesives and stuff that I'll be using. So we're gonna go ahead and come back here. Uh, when Actually, when we come back, uh, we'll start uh, adding our oil paints to this piece, and then I'll show you how we can wash that and, uh, again, make it look like it is weathered, perhaps a Mandalorian traveling through the Dune Sea kind of weathering. So, again, once we come back, we'll get started. So we're going to start using uh, this particular color. It's Payne's Gray. It's a very dark gray, almost black. Uh, you'll just take a very small, small amount, uh, probably not even a dime size. I'll show you uh, here. I just squeeze out a little bit. You can see just that little tiny blob. And then we're going to add some of the naphtha to that. You want to make it about a 50-50 blend. Um, this would probably be easier if I just used the cup to mix that. Pour some of that into the cup. Don't worry, we're going to come back and use some of that later. You also want to make sure that you're not doing this in a confined space, open flames anywhere nearby. Uh, you want to always practice safety. If you do this outside, it's a lot easier. Uh, I'm in a second room in our apartment. That's one of the other reasons we went and uh, I went out and got one of these lavalier mics just because our 
Neighbors have a small toddler as well as the window of this apartment faces a roadway and on the weekends it gets really, really busy. Uh, so I went ahead and got this lavalier. We're going to see how the audio turns out in this video. So once we've mixed that naphtha with the black paint, we're just going to thin it out a little bit. So it's going to look really watery, kind of runny. You might even have a little bit of it stick to the tip of the popsicle stick. Uh, but again, you just want to kind of mix that up just to give you a wash. Keep plenty of paper towels close by. And we're going to get started on the black. We'll get our piece, set that up. Usually I like to put paper down. Um, I didn't, but I do have this uh, mat, this cutting mat I've been using on this table. Uh, you'll just slightly wet the tip of the brush. This is a brush that I've used multiple times. What you're going to do is you're just going to kind of apply it in different areas. And it might look like it's going on a little too dark. But don't worry, we're going to go ahead and take some of that off. Now you can dab this with a paper towel. You can use an old t-shirt. Um, I've done that as well. Uh, I have an old shirt here uh, that will pull some of that off. And you can see it already starts to darken up. Uh, we'll go ahead and make that just a little bit lighter. Um, and I'll show you guys how we can do that. So if you take another paper towel, oh, I already put a hole in my glove. <clears throat> take another paper towel and just add a little bit of that naphtha to it. You can go in here and start pulling some of it off. So again, you can work this out in multiple layers. You can work this out in multiple passes. Uh, you can add as much as you want to the piece and then even go back and take it off. So that's one of the reasons I like this technique as well. I do have to think off earth uh, for showing that. And again, if you want to use uh, acrylics, you could probably do something very similar. Uh, the acrylics, I believe, are more forgiving than the oil paints. Uh, but what this naphtha does is it allows, allows the oil paint uh, to be removed uh, from this. Uh, so once you put that down, you don't have to worry about it drying. You can twist, swirl, blot, wipe. You can do whatever technique you would like uh, to get the result that you want. I'll probably go back and use a little bit of this shirt again, just because my paper towel's giving me some a pattern. And then if you feel that you're putting too much down, you can always go back and compare to the other side. So we'll continue doing this. Black is really good also for blaster marks. So if you guys are trying to um, make your armor look like you've been in a shootout, uh, you can always put some of the uh, black around the scar or the uh, chipped paint that represents the blaster mark. Um, and again, it's, you can add to it, take it off. 
and you can just get that desired result. So it's about, I'm not sure, maybe almost the middle of March here. And uh, I know there's a lot of folks out there getting their costumes and uh, cosplay outfits ready uh, for May the 4th. Uh, like I said in my last video, I probably won't be able to make it uh, to any of the May 4th events with a completed costume, uh, but I'm definitely trying to get this done before my local con in September. Um, hopefully we can get that going. I can show you guys a finished product. And these are all skills that I learned just watching YouTube, watching other makers and uh, creators out there um, just showing their talents. Um, I was a little bored during COVID and decided I wanted to pass the time. I started out thinking about a Vader costume, um, but saw that the 501st had quite a few uh, requirements and you couldn't really uh, customize a Vader costume uh, and that's what drew me to the Mandalorian Mercs was that you can add your own colors you can um, have your own backstory uh, use your own styles so um, yeah I started building and that's when you saw me build this helmet uh, I even went uh, built a, quite a few out of foam I even cast this white one here uh, out of plastic resin from a mold. I've got videos for that as well. I can include uh, links to. So I think we're going to go ahead and stop with the black right here. Um, but we are going to add some brown to it. So I think we might have to lighten it up just a little bit, but I think that brown is going to mute some of this, uh, this gray color uh, that we have on the, uh, the piece that we're painting tonight. So again, the same way, uh, we'll go ahead and add some brown. And then more naphtha. Also, it doesn't really matter if your paints mix at this point. Uh, you might get some really good color tones out of it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with this brown. Again, just a little bit more like a mud, sand, dirt, grime, stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and use the same brush. And we'll start adding... Some brown all over this. There are a lot of makers out there as well, a lot of um, different clubs, different Mandalorian Mercs uh, members that are posting how to's, and they can show you uh, just a, a range of ways. I've seen people taking their Sintra, scraping it on asphalt, uh, using steel wool, all kinds of stuff. Um, this particular piece is a piece of cardboard, a life cereal box that I put fiberglass and uh, resin on, uh, polyester resin, and then painted. Uh, so I'm probably not going to be using steel wool or um, asphalt on this one. Uh, but I will uh, use these other techniques. Like I said, uh, lots of folks out there weathering with acrylic uh, but I wanted to show you guys this really cool method using the oil paint so you can see here that looks like quite a lot uh, but if we go back over that we can start spreading it around a little more lightening it up again just dabbing it as much as we can and it kind of looks like a lot of mud just 
spread all over the armor. Might have to change up to a little bit of a different uh, napkin or paper towel just because I'm getting that pattern here. See, I went ahead and got an older t-shirt, uh, something I've been using for my uh, shining shoes, actually. But yeah, that'll give us a little more of a smoother pattern on this. So you can see we've got this nice and weathered. It's dark. It has... A little bit of brown, a little bit of gray, uh, some of the different layering. Uh, you can see, looks like it's built up over time, which is exactly what we are looking for. Adding different colors and uh, layers, letting some of it dry. That might do it. Just a little more here. Like I said, you could do this all night if you didn't pay attention to the time. Um, I'm just sneaking into the room uh, this after evening, try to get this done. So we get this video posted and I can move on to my next project. Um, it looks like I'm actually going to be moving to uh, either the cog piece or the um, girth belt as well as the blaster. Um, I've got some patterns that I already drew out and I've been working on. Um, for the blaster, I have those over here cut some practice pieces out of cardboard. Don't know if you can see that, but I did a little bit of a modification, combination of two different blasters. Um, the DE, was it the 11? No, the 10, DE 10, and the E30, I think. I've cut some pieces out of cardboard that I'm gonna turn into uh, pieces of wood just to kind of get an idea. Uh, again, I'm doing this the hard way because I don't have a 3D printer, but I'm also trying to show folks that you don't really need one. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you guys on this technique, which I thought was probably the most impressive uh, from uh, the gentleman uh, off earth, is if you take a little bit of the naphtha with your chip brush, get a clean chip brush, and then you want to um, dry it out just a little bit. And then if you actually flick that brush, it kind of gives you this watermark, like some spots, some staining uh, on the armor. Uh, and again, that's, it'll show up uh, once it dries. Um, but again, you just want to flick that a little bit and it will, uh, add just one extra layer uh, just again to convince folks that this is real armor on a real Mandalorian uh, traveling uh, trying to make his way through the galaxy I guess uh, so again thank you folks for uh, watching me uh, finish up this chest armor build and I will let you guys know when I have a new project coming thank you again you can go ahead like this video subscribe share it make some comments I'm always looking for ways to improve. I don't claim to know it all, uh, but again, these are just techniques that I've picked up from various other builders, uh, as well as some of the folks I've talked to in my local clan. Uh, so yeah, please uh, like, subscribe, share the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.